So a couple days ago, a good friend of mine and I entered a flag football league, a relatively competitive one. Now we get a lot of questions about how does strength training or high intensity training in particular transfer to your ability to play a sport. And um, how would an individual kind of prepare for some kind of sport like this? Some, you know, very high intensity, lots of sprinting, jumping, etc. How do you prepare for it? So I signed up for this on Monday. The first game is actually on Thursday. So I don't have a lot of time to prepare. So what I decided to do immediately is practice, like I say, the specific skills of the sport in a very similar environment. So what was the approach? Did I go out jogging? No. Did I start doing explosive agility drills and all that bullshit? No. What I did was, since I, you know, I play receiver, I got a pair of uh, receiving gloves that I'm going to be using in the games, a pair of cleats. Actually, I have to go get some cleats and practice in the cleats so that way you can adapt specifically to the cleats and the grass, stuff like that. How am I going to prepare? You know what I'm going to do? Just practice football. I had uh, my good friend come up who was actually, you know, my quarterback in high school. He joined with me. And what did we do? We ran routes. We caught the football. We threw the football. And we did it with, um, you know, a relatively high level of intensity in order to get that specific adaptation to that type of activity. Was I out of breath? Yeah. Of course I was, um, because not having done that activity in a long time, my nervous system needs to become more efficient at the movements associated with that activity. Was I slower? Hell no. <laughs> I was as fast as I was when I was about 30, 40 pounds lighter back in college. Just as fast, but definitely out of breath, out of shape. Of course, moving around, you know, 200, you know, 20 pounds is a lot tougher than moving around about 190 back when I played college. So, you know, I'm going to kind of document my preparation, kind of how I prepare for it um, and how I kind of improve and perform in the games over time. So today, you know, I got the game. First game is tomorrow, tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m. My next step, I'm going to go get a bear cleats. Um, you know, relatively light cleats. I'm going to go to a grass field and I'm just going to kind of run shadow routes. I'm just going to sprint routes the way I would in a game until I get extremely exhausted. And then I'm going to chill, recover, adapt, repeat. I'm not going to go out there and run five miles. I'm not going to do, you know, 50, 100 meter dash sprints because that's not going to apply to playing flag football. I'm going to run routes, I'm going to backpedal. Um, and you know, get my friend to come out with me and catch the football. And that's the thing, you know, athletes really, they overthink this. They think that you got to do all this crazy shit in order to prepare for a sport. You know, I mean, I, I've been playing football my whole life. The skills are there. I just need to turn them back on. And that's going to come from practice. Just like they say how you, you know, you, once you learn to ride a bike, you can always ride a bike. Of course. You know, if you haven't ridden a bike in 30 years and then you get on one, it might feel a little awkward, but you'll pick it up. Once you learn a skill, according to <clears throat> motor learning literature, um, once you learn a skill, and that's literally what this book says, you don't forget it. Your body knows it. You can become less efficient and less proficient at that skill over time if you don't practice it. But once you learn a skill, you learn it. So... I'm curious to see, and I'm going to document how quickly my body adapts to, you know, this skill, this sport again, because I mean, I'll tell you, it was kind of tough yesterday. I was breathing, breathing pretty, pretty heavy, but I'm going to show you that, you know, over just, you know, a couple times a week going out there and just kind of running routes, catching the football by about week three, I'm probably not going to be out of breath at all. <laughs> it's going to be relatively easy. And I'm also going to show you guys kind of, um, you know, how you can literally improve speed, power, and explosiveness without doing movements that require speed, power, and explosiveness. And, um, you know, probably get somebody to film it 
and um, you know, film me and my buddy playing on the team, and you're gonna watch me smoke people. <laughs> like you're gonna, you know, even though I'm you know 30, 40 pounds heavier than I was, there's not gonna be anybody who can cover me. There's no way. Um, because I noticed yesterday, just when I was running, I wasn't even running in cleats, so I was kind of, you know, when I made a change in direction or a cut during the routes. They were relatively slow, choppy feet to maintain center of gravity, and I was still fast, you know. So just going to prove to you guys that, you know, speed, power, and explosiveness is a combination of skill, efficiency, um, muscular strength, and genetics. You know, I have genetics for this. It's not going to go away as long as I maintain, you know, a decent level of physical capacity, which I have. So, um, you know, looking forward to see how all this goes. I'm going to document it, show you guys what's up. And uh, if you have anything else you want me to show during this, this journey <laughs> towards getting back into a recreational sport, kind of, you know, hit the, hit the comment section. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll document it for you and kind of show you guys how this all works. And maybe this can be a good, you know, um, frame of work for you guys to base your own experiences off of, you know, if you want to get back into, into football, into some kind of sport, basketball, whatever, um, European football, soccer, whatever, you know, kind of do the similar thing. You don't need to be going out there every single day and running five miles. You don't need to be doing these explosive movements. You don't need to be doing all this bullshit. You just need to make your body really strong, really high level of physical capacity, metabolic cardiovascular efficiency, bone and connective tissue strength, which you'll get from training, high intensity training. And then you simply go apply that to the skill, become efficient in that skill. You're going to be a rock star. So I'm going to show you guys how all this, all this goes down. Again, if you have anything else you want me to kind of document and show you throughout the process, throw a comment down below and um, you guys will see me smoke some people on the field. <laughs> you know, a lot of, I've had a lot of comments you know, when I talk about, um, you know, training for speed, power and explosiveness, some people say, well, you know, well, you're not fast and you're not explosive and you're not powerful. Oh, yeah. Watch this.